talk to you about one of my favorite subjects, which is networking. Who here loves networking? Okay, you're my people. Does anybody get the heebie-jeebies and the hives when I talk about networking? Yeah. Um, how do you feel about collaboration? Better. Better. Yeah. Yeah. And do you ever feel like the networking space is a space with a lot of competition? Is that one of the things that concerns those of you that don't really like networking? Is it the competition or is it more the having to speak to people and be seen a little bit more of that? My intention after tonight is that you fall in love with networking and hopefully I can pass on some of my joy around it. And if you know that networking would be good for you, that maybe after today you do a little bit more of it and dip your toes into there. Does that sound good for everybody? So when Nikki introduced me, she introduced me as the president of the Rogue Valley Women in Business, which is true and our brand and organization has expanded. So you'll see on the PowerPoint, I talk about the Elevated Networking Society. The Elevated Networking Society is the larger organization that I hope will be global one day. Rogue Valley Women in Business is our first chapter, but we are talking to someone about a chapter in Utah. We're talking to someone about a chapter in Portland, maybe even a chapter in Chico. So if you like what you hear tonight and a woman pops in your mind in a town other than Southern Oregon, Jackson County, that maybe would want to head up a networking group for women, please introduce us. That's my first networking ask for collaboration. I will probably make more before the night is over. And even before this presentation started, we were networking together and we're gonna do a little bit of that as a facilitated exercise at the end of the presentation. So tonight you're gonna to hear my story, which you might not really understand what it has to do with networking, but I promise that it has so much to do with networking. We're gonna talk about the Elevated Networking Society and you're gonna learn about that organization and what we stand for. There is a woman in our networking group, her name is Shay, and she has a beautiful story of success within networking, and I'm gonna share her story. Then I'm gonna give you some networking tips so that you can leave here feeling excited and empowered to go to your next networking event. We're gonna talk about a collaboration example. The title of my speech is Collaboration Over Competition, and I truly believe that collaboration is where it's at because we can walk into a room with people that are in the same field as us and maybe feel like it's a competitive space. But if you flip that around and turn it into a collaborative space, magic can happen. Then I'm gonna tell you how to get involved in our organization. And I hope that you leave here tonight and you spread the word about us. So the, all these things are true. I have a lot of experience in entrepreneurship. I'm a top salesperson for a health and wellness company. I've been involved in the entertainment industry, in the, the music arts, in many different aspects. But the part of my story that I want to share with you tonight is the reason I'm so extremely passionate about lifting women and facilitating the rise of the female visionary. And it goes back to the way that I was raised. I had a hippie mom. We're in Ashland, so... We have a lot of those, right? And she was awesome. She was super creative. She forged her own path and she was very counterculture, especially for the early 80s when I was a kid. And there's a few things that she didn't like. School, the government, um, anyone that was in a position of telling her what to do. Um, she didn't like any kind of modern medicine and she was super out there, super cool woman. And we had a lot of adventures, but one of the things that she chose to do was not put me in school. So I don't have an early education. I was not homeschooled. I wasn't even unschooled. I, my education was neglected. I spent my time running around with goats and horses on basically a hippie commune. And when I was 21 years old, I decided that I didn't want that life for me anymore. It didn't feel healthy. It actually felt spiritually, financially and emotionally abusive. And I decided to pack my bags and get out of there. So I am a 21 year old woman with no education, no network, no money, no idea how to go get a job, how to interact 
in the world. And I decided that I was going to build my life from the ground up. So I went and I got a job in the restaurant industry as a server. I got myself a car. Amazingly, they give you credit when you're that kind of person. You don't have bad credit. And if you have a job, they just give you a car. So I got a car. I got a place to live. And I felt like I was really starting to get the hang of what I would call normie life. And I was making money and I was making friends. And what happened is I fell in love with a man. And he was very charismatic. He, everybody loved him. He was handsome, he was smart, and he encouraged me to go to college. And I thought, there's no way. I don't even, I don't have a high school degree. I don't, like, I can't go to college. And he, he said, no, you can go to college, you should do it. So I enrolled in the GD, GED program and I got my GED when I was 21 years old. And then I went and I took my SATs. I passed just barely and I got into SOU. And I thought it was the coolest thing. I was finally learning. I had never been in a classroom before. And I loved it. I soaked it up. I got really frustrated that some of the kids in the classroom did not appreciate being there because I appreciated it so much. I was a little unclear what I wanted to do with my life. So I was just an English major. I was like, that's cool. We're going to roll with this. Eventually, I started to get a taste for health and wellness. This is when I first got interested in it. I had a job at a chiropractor's office and she became a mentor to me. And she said, you know, up in Portland, you can go to PSU and be in the pre-chiropractic program. And I thought, that's awesome, I'm gonna do that. That guy that I told you about, guess where he lived? Portland. So I said, I'm moving up there, I'm gonna transfer to PSU, I'm going into the pre-chiropractic, he was super excited. I was super excited. I got my brand new car that I had my own car payment on. I was a college educated woman. And I drove up to Portland. I got an apartment. I got into the college. I got a job at the dean's office. I had the best boyfriend in the whole world. And I was like, I could leave my whole childhood behind. I have figured out this life thing. And to be honest, I was already thinking about marriage and babies and I was like, I did it. I am a normie and so proud. Um, unfortunately, trauma sometimes has a way of catching up with you if you don't do the healing. And that amazing man turned out to be an abuser. And for three months, I lived in absolute hell, fearing for my life on a daily basis. And when I finally got out of that situation, I dropped out of college. They repossessed my car. I was so traumatized that I never got myself back into school. I ruined my credit. I got into drugs and alcohol, and I had a very long period of my life where I was dark and depressed and in a lot of pain. But I learned something so important from that situation, which was I would never, ever again let any person whether it was a man or a job or a school or a friend, be in control of my financial health. It took me a while to figure out how, but I knew that that's what I wanted. So after spending many years in the production industry and getting a taste for the LA lifestyle and really destroying my body, I finally had the wake up call and went, oh, if I wanna be healthy, and I wanna be financially free, I should get into health and wellness, right? The connection matches. What that was about was I started selling a health and wellness product. And I thought, you know what? If I have to be healthy, then I'm gonna be healthy and it's this great accountability for me. And being a salesperson, you can kind of have an unlimited earning cap. If you're willing to do the work and if you're willing to dig in, you can have some really great income potential. So I spent the next 16 years completely dedicated to personal development, business development, healing my body, healing my mind, healing my trauma. And I 
made it. I made it to the 1%. I made it to the six figure club. And you would think that I would be satisfied. I will tell you that I wasn't. And the reason being is I wasn't living out my true passion, which is to empower women to be financially independent, to empower women to know that they can do whatever they want to do. If they want to have a job, if they want to start a business, if they want to be an entrepreneur, eat, if they want to stay home and raise babies and not have a job, they can do anything they want to do, but they don't ever have to put their power into somebody else's hands. So that is when I discovered that I could take my joy of women's empowerment, my knowledge of networking, and create a space where women can come and they can grow and they can learn about collaboration and they can connect with one another so that they can make more money so that they can then give back to their community without sacrificing themselves. So that's a little bit of my story. And now we're going to dig into the Elevated Networking Society. The Elevated Networking Society provides opportunities for elevated collaboration, empowered education, and community connection for women in business. Our group offers a platform for growth through community workshops, classes, business development programs, and in-person gatherings. This is a picture of our monthly mixer. Who has ever been to one of our mixers? They are so good. They're so, so fun. We have about 80 women that come out every month and we hang out for a couple of hours, eat some food, drink some wine. These are actually mocktails. So we always make sure that our events are inclusive. If you like wine, you can have wine. If you don't, you can have a mocktail and we connect and we grow with each other. We also have events called success circles. This is a smaller event. So for some people, 80 people, women in a room networking is overwhelming and it's too much so that's why we have the smaller success circles and that has about 14 to 16 women it's still a two-hour event and every woman has the opportunity to stand up talk about her business and ask for support from the group then we have our mixers and just a little teaser we are working on producing a summit so pretty soon we will have a rogue valley women in business summit that will happen annually in the Rogue Valley. So what is elevated networking? It really is different from normal networking. When I think of normal or traditional networking, I think of a more masculine dominated style where you walk into a room, you're in a business suit, you have cards, you got a firm handshake and you say, hi, this is my name, this is what I do, what do you do? And then you exchange your cards and you move on. Very transactional, not feminine at all. And when I walked into my first networking event like that, I turned around and I walked out the other way because I did not want to do it that way. When I walked into a networking event that was a women-focused networking event, and I saw the difference and the women in this, my first women's event that I went to wanted to help me. They wanted to get to know me. They were looking at me, the person first, before they just shoved their business card in my face. That's when I went, oh, this is cool. And this is magical. And it was a very important aspect of my business because in the type of sales I did, I did direct sales or network marketing. I was talking to my family and friends and then they would come to my house for a presentation or they'd have me at their house for a presentation. And you run out of family and friends pretty quick. And my goal was to be top 1%, to go all the way. And I knew that I had to reach beyond my family and friends. And they could not have done that without networking. And that's why I really dove headfirst into the networking world, but found I wanted to do it in a different way. So I've distilled what I call elevated networking down into three important parts. First of all, it's authentic connections. So when you walk into a networking space, all of us here tonight, I want us to look around at each other. Just go ahead, look at someone next to you, make eye contact. You are looking at a person, a real person with a heart and a mind and passions and dreams and hobbies. They are not just a person with a business. 
They're not just a person with a bank account that can buy things from your business. It is not transactional. We are human beings looking to connect with each other. I give a great example of this when I'm talking to people about social media, where I just like to remind everyone that social media is social. And I would dare say that networking is social. So you wouldn't walk into a party and immediately come into the party and go, hi, my name is Erin. I run the Rogue Valley Women in Business and I'd love for you to come to one of my events. Here's my business card. What would you guys do if I walked into a party with that attitude? You'd be like, I don't want to talk to her. Like who invited her? Get her out of here. Instead, we walk into a party and we go, hi, what's your name? We know, like, where do you live? Gee, are you married? Do you have any kids? What, what do you do? And we have communication and we connect. We have a heartfelt connection. And sometimes at those parties, you find out that the person has a business. Lisa is an amazing marketing advisor. Wendy does incredible workshops where she connects you to nature. And so if we were at a party and we start talking, I might find out about what Wendy does and I might want to connect with her about her business. I might even want to purchase from her. So I suggest that you approach social media and networking in the same way. Be there first to be social, to make an authentic connection before you ever consider that this person could be a prospect, a potential buyer, that they're your ideal client. Try to erase that because then when you walk into networking spaces, the people you're networking with will be like, oh wow, you're a real person. And I kind of like you. And guess what? We do business with the people we like, know, and trust. If we don't like someone, we're not gonna do business with them. If they come off as super salesy or networky, we're not gonna trust them, right? So our goal with networking is to first create that like, know, and trust factor and find out if we're even a match to be friends, first of all. Then it's, well, what's your business? And then what's my business? And could we collaborate? Maybe I wanna purchase what you have, but we have to approach it first from authentic connections. The next one that's so important, and this is a place I see a lot of people fall down, and I'm gonna explain why. Community engagement. What will happen is you maybe will go to one networking event, and you walk in, you meet some people, sure, maybe it's even authentic connection, and then you don't go back for six months. And now I'm glad you're networking, that's good, but if you're not engaged in that community, people won't remember you. And when somebody thinks, oh gosh, I really would like to connect with someone that does constellation work, like Gwendolyn. If Gwendolyn isn't showing up all the time and making those connections, I won't think of her. And so when you start networking, wherever you do it, whether you do it in a group like we have something super structured like BNI, maybe you go to the greeters meeting with the Chamber of Commerce, or you network in spaces like your gym or the yoga studio that you go to, a key part is that you are consistent in your presence there. And more than consistent consistency, you are a member of the community. So you're showing up to give value. You have an interest in what's happening there. You know the people. Many of the women that come to our mixers every month, I call friends now because I know them, because I see them every month. And that translates to business. The third point that I think is so important and so unique to the way that we do networking is this idea of collaboration over competition. I learned this because as that sales rep for a direct sales company, when I would walk into a networking space, there would usually be three or four people there that sold the same product I did. And it would have been so easy for me to go, I'm out of here. <laughs> why, why, why am I gonna be here? There's, it's saturated, there's plenty of them. And that can happen with realtors, what massage therapists, there can be some businesses where you're gonna show up in a room and there will be a lot of your competitors there. If you lean into the idea that there's opportunity for collaboration, you will actually get so much value. And 
there really isn't competition because the person who would like, know, and trust me may not like, know, and trust the other person that is making the exact same offer that I am. And it's no judgment. We didn't do anything wrong. I just have the people that vibe with me and she has the people that vibe with her. And if we can collaborate, then we can be even stronger together. So those are the three aspects that I think make up for elevated networking, which I find very different than your run of the mill transactional networking. Okay, I'm just checking my time, I'm doing great. Okay. So I wanna tell you a fun story about my friend Shay. She wasn't my friend until recently. However, she was coming to my networking events. Actually, she told me recently that she was in our Facebook group for six months before she came to a networking event. Then she started coming to the networking event back in December of last year, and nobody remembers her. Until she came to this one networking event where we had a presentation about your elevator pitch. And she decided it was time to get her elevator pitch down. And the elevator pitch is really just how you tell people what you do in a short 30 second simple statement. And she started working her elevator pitch and then she started coming to our success circles and she started to practice her elevator pitch. And then all of a sudden, everyone knows Shay. And I was shocked when she told me that she had actually been coming to the events for six months before I even remember her coming there. So Shay is the founder and CEO of Archangels Alchemist. She's a spiritual coach, a master channel, and an angelic alchemist. I'm always trying to get her to distill this down, but basically Shay teaches people how to be their own channel. So you don't have to go to a psychic or a tarot reader or anyone who's gonna tell you the future. She teaches you how to just do it herself. And she is amazing. This is her timeline of what happened. And this is Shay over on this side with beautiful Angelica. So she attended her first mixer in December of 2023. And she came to almost every one since then. But she hid out and she felt shy. So she was coming consistently, but she wasn't an engaged community member. After a mixer where Lisa Petrini shared a talk about our elevator pitch, she began attending our success circles. And now the success circle, you have to stand up and tell us who you are and what you do. And she was shaken in her boots. I remember when she came to this event, she was so, so scared. After that success circle, she finally started in July engaging in one-on-one -on -one meetups. So we encouraged the women in our community to go out for coffee or tea or take a walk with at least one other woman a week. Because you might meet someone at a mixer and kind of feel like you vibe, but that collaboration isn't going to happen until you sit down one-on-one -on -one with people. <coughs> now here's where it's cool. Up until this point, Shay had been making zero revenue in her business. She wanted to be this teacher of channeling and she was putting it forth and she was trying to get clients and she was trying to promote herself, but she had zero revenue. In July, that month that she started doing the one-to-ones and she went to the success circle, she made her first $222. The next month in August, her revenue was $2,000. And in September, her revenue was $5,000. She attributes this to her engagement in networking and into the practice of clearly saying what she does that she was able to make this change. In September, she joined our accelerator program, which I'll tell you about in a moment. And in October, she had a business revenue of $10,000. She's now on track to double that revenue in 90 days. I wanted her to be here tonight. She couldn't be here tonight. She will be speaking at our mixer this week and really talking about her journey with this. And this is a picture of Shay at her second success circle where she stood up and told the room what she did and the clarity that came out of her, the, the ping of tonality, everybody started clapping. Some of them had watched her 
her process, but for many people, they could feel what it felt like when a woman was clear and confident about what she does and what she has to offer and how people can work with her. So I love Shay. She's so amazing. If you ever get a chance to have a one-to-one -one with her or to purchase her services, I highly recommend it. So these are some tips to really help you become better and better at networking and have great results like Shay has had. So like I said, it's that engagement in the community by consistently showing up. So the different ways to show up in our networking community, but I would recommend this for any networking you might wanna do, is to be present in the Facebook group. And what I mean by that is there's different conversation starters going on in our Facebook group. People ask for advice, people share their wins, and you wanna be someone who is commenting and engaging on all of those posts. So when you go into our Facebook group, you are networking. Every time your face, your voice, your little heart emoji comes up, you're engaging in the community, you're making it a better place, and people are starting to recognize your name and your face. Engaging in the community and consistently showing up means attending the events. So definitely the monthly mixer. Make sure that you are there every month if you'd like to be known in the community. Take the step further into a success circle where you can practice speaking and telling people what you do and then start the collaboration with people because that's when a lot of magic happens. When two people come together and collaborate, which I'm gonna give you an example, then all of a sudden it's an exponential wave of goodness and you're co-mingling each other's networks. So there's people that will find out about what you do that never would have if you hadn't collaborated with Wendy. The other way to show up consistently in the community is to have those meetups with people. So to really put it in your schedule to time block, I'm gonna go on one walk with a new person every week. I, there's one woman in our group, Angelica, she has lunch with someone every day. She just makes sure that her lunch hour is booked with a networking partner. For me, I pick one day a week and I will book multiple networking tea dates or walk dates kind of all together. And you want to, don't let a week go by without meeting someone new and finding out what they do. If you're feeling like I don't know what to say in those kinds of meetings, we have events called Power Networking Lunches where you can come and I facilitate you through that conversation so you can get used to how it goes. But essentially you are about an hour meeting, half an hour you talk about yourself and your business, half an hour I talk about myself and my business. And then we're looking for ways that we can collaborate or help each other or give each other business. The other way to engage in community is to actively visit businesses in the Rogue Valley that are owned by women and go and have your one-to-ones there. A lot of us go to Cafe Soleil in Talent very often. It's a woman-owned business. Go around and try new places. Go and try new restaurants. Go to new shops network with the people who own those places and that will only spread your networking um, adventure and abilities. Step two, cultivate clarity. What is your service, product, or offer? This is a place where things can get really murky. There are so many times when I'm networking with someone new and I say, what do you do? And they will say, well, I sell things on Marketplace and I do a little bit of massage and I also work at a dentist's office. And I'm like, what, what do you do? <laughs> so we are, I understand being a multi-passionate entrepreneur. I do a lot of things. I have my hands in a lot of places. I can do a lot of things. But when I'm walking into a networking event, if I can't clearly say what I do and who I help, I'm actually not gonna say anything because it will only confuse the community. You want the community to go, okay, Sophia, what does Sophia do? And I'm still getting to know you, so I know a little bit. I know that you're producing the AI conference that's coming up, but you want your name 
to be connected with a very clear product or service or business. And so a way you can test that out is you can actually ask people, hey, what do you think I do? That's a great question in your one-to-one. -one. Hey, I'm just curious, based on my social media profile, based on conversations we've had, what do you think I do? And if the person can't tell you, then you know your message needs some more clarity. You also want it to be short. So sometimes I'll get into this conversation and there will be a very long monologue about what this person does. And I am, my eyes are gla glazing over and I'm like just wondering when they're gonna get to the point, right? And I understand why it's happening. It's because there isn't clarity for themselves. And the only way to get this clarity is to practice and to get feedback from your peers. We've been talking about AI a little bit and I actually love using AI to help me clarify my introduction elevator pitch. I know Lisa calls it something different. Your value proposition. Value proposition. <laughs> so I will put into chat GPT what I think I do and then I will say, how would you make this shorter, clearer, more concise? And then we work together to come up with something that really hits home. But I know it's not finished until I've gone and practiced it on my networking partners. So I might take it to a success circle or I might try it out at a mixer. And it feels right when it feels right. It's kind of like what I said about Shay. When she introduced herself at that one success circle, it just was like, bing, 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 bing. And I, I'm gonna get to I want to hear all of the things that you all do, but I have to wait till I'm at the end of the presentation. So start thinking about that. I want to hear your clarity statement of your service, your product, or your offer. One little tip about that too, if you're having a hard time clearly saying what you do, you can use an analogy. So what I mean by that, I'm going to use Wendy as an example, is someone could ask Wendy, what do you do? And she could say, we know how we're all stressed out all the time and it feels like everybody's sick all the time and, and we're just running around with our heads cut off and the person will be like, yeah, yeah, she goes, well, I fix that. So if you can come up with some kind of example, it can help you get clear about what you do. And just remember, it's all practice. Every mixer you attend, every one-to-one -one you have, every success circle, every networking conversation, you're gonna get clearer and clearer and clearer until you can just rattle off your value proposition statement and people around you go, oh, I know what Lisa does. We all know what Lisa does. She is a marketing architect, right? She helps people with their marketing messages and that's because she's so clear about what she does and her branding backs that up. Step three, connect with your networking friends weekly and look for opportunities to collaborate. So a lot of the women in our group will actually have chats that they're doing. They're talking to each other um, in the DMs. They're texting each other. They're becoming real friends and they're helping each other. Um, Shay the other day helped uh, another couple with a marketing video for her book. And that is so beautiful to see that happen, but really ask each other, what do you, what do you need help with right now? How can I serve you? How can I, collaborate with you. Also looking for collaboration opportunities where maybe you have similar ideal clients and maybe you could offer a talk or a retreat to both of your clients, but you're collaborating together. So I want to give you an example of a beautiful collaboration project that I've been involved in and Lisa has been involved in. It's called the Accelerator Program. And we've got Lainey Sullivan, myself, Lisa Mannion, and Angelica Owens here. And we, Lisa and I are the only ones in this group that have known each other for a long time. The rest of these women I met through our mixers and our networking events. The Accelerator Program is a 12-month program offered by the Elevated Networking Society. It's designed to help women business owners grow their business and enhance their entrepreneurial skills. The Accelerator provides a mix of mentorship, networking, and practical learning. Participants receive guidance from experienced businesswomen, Erin Fugate, Lainey Sullivan, Lisa Mannion, and Angelica Owens. So you know a little bit about me. 
Lainey is a fractional COO. You know a little bit about Lisa. She's a marketing expert. Angelica Owens is a photographer and a branding expert. And so this is what happened. So I started running the Rogue Valley Women in Business group as a hobby. My friend started it a couple of years ago. She asked me to take it over and I didn't take it too seriously. I loved networking. I loved the women who went, but I have a lot going on in my life. And so I just consistently was hosting this monthly event and watching it grow and grow and grow. After about a year, if I'm being honest, I wanted to make some money. I was doing this completely volunteer and it was time for me to turn it into some kind of revenue. But I didn't really know how, nor did I know how I wanted that to happen. Because as a business owner, we know that we only have so much capacity. And you want to be really careful about what you decide to give your time and your energy to. So I was in this space of curiosity and wondering. It was like, hmm, I wonder if I could turn this into a business. I really like this group, I really like this community. How could this fit into my life? And one day at our mixer, a woman named Lainey Sullivan came to the mixer. And she walked right up to me, she's a great networker, and she said, I wanna have, oh gosh, now I'm, everything's falling. Am I still on? Okay. She walked right up to me and she said, I'd like to have a one-to-one -one with you. And I was like, great. I pulled out my calendar. She pulled out her calendar. We scheduled a one-to-one, -one, probably for about two or three weeks out. Didn't really think about it. The day came, we met up for tea and we had a great conversation. Honestly, we talked about life. We didn't even get into business for probably the first hour of our talk. We just hit it off. She was really cool. I laughed a lot, it was super fun. And then towards the end, when we were paying our check, she said, how can I help you? This is a great question to ask your networking partners. How can I help you? What do you need help with right now? And I said, well, you know, I'd really like to figure out how to monetize this networking group. And she goes, you're not making any money? She's like, how long have you been doing this? And I was like, yeah, I know I've just been volunteering. I really love the group. It's, it's been awesome, but I would like to learn how to monetize it. And Lainey gave me a little bit of advice, a little bit of guidance, and she suggested that I launch a mastermind, a six month mastermind. And I thought, that sounds cool. I have a lot of business experience. I'd love to do a mastermind. So I created a website, created a sales page. I created a application. I reached out to Lisa. I said, Lisa, would you look at my stuff? and See, you know how this is all going. I, I got some people who applied for the mastermind. And after looking at the answers that everyone gave me on their application and talking to Lisa and getting clear about my vision and my mission and my values, I realized A, the people who applied for the mastermind needed something different. And B, I didn't really want to run a mastermind all by myself. I actually prefer to be in collaboration mode. So I shut down the applications and I talked to Lisa, right? We clarified my mission and my vision. And I realized that what was so important to me was yes, elevating women and helping them make more money. But even more important was this idea of collaboration. I loved collaboration. I loved amplifying other people and their expertise. So I asked Lisa and Lainey and my friend Angelica if they would make an advisory board for me because I realized I didn't want to do this alone. If I was going to go all in and create this into a business and an organization, didn't want to do it alone. Oh, I guess I messed that up a little bit. Advisory board happened first. I realized the mastermind wasn't right. It all happened really fast, May and June. In June, I said, you know what? The people who applied for this mastermind, they actually need business consultation. They all would have loved to hire Lainey or Angelica or Lisa or myself, but maybe didn't quite have the resources to hire those people one-on-one. -on -one. And I thought, what if I could go to these ladies and ask to collaborate and we could design a program 
that gave everybody the business consultation and support that they needed for a fraction of the cost in a way that was completely collaborative so that we could all have fun doing it. And they so happily said yes I made a sales page, <laughs> I made an application process, I put it out to everybody, and we launched it and sold out the program in two weeks. Now, I don't love to throw numbers around, but I want to tell you that in that moment, this little organization that had been a um, volunteer for me suddenly was six figures in revenue. And this never would have happened if I hadn't been willing to collaborate and what's so awesome about it is Lisa, Lainey, Angelica, and myself, we are competitors. We serve the same people. And if we had looked at each other and said, I'm not gonna, no, 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 <laughs> I'm gonna go do my thing over here. I'm not gonna do anything with you because I don't wanna you know, compete. Then we would have lost out on this beautiful, beautiful program that people are having so much success with and so much fun. And I probably wouldn't have turned this organization into a business. So it's just a little example of how beautiful collaboration can be. Now what we decided is, you know what? People are starting to close business through this organization. And I'm hearing the stories. You heard the story of Shay. You heard the story of the Accelerator program. There's multiple other people that are telling me, yeah, I'm getting referrals. I'm closing business because of this networking event. So we decided to put on the website a revenue ticker. And every week we go and ask the women to put in any revenue that they generated because of networking with our group. It's been up there two weeks and we already have $200,000 that was generated and we're gonna keep tracking that. And my goal for the end of 2025 is to be over a million. That's in the Rogue Valley, you guys. That is economic impact in the Rogue Valley among women-owned business because we are doing collaboration over competition. Yeah, I love that part. It is exciting. So you can go to elevatednetworkingsociety.com and enter your numbers at any time, but you can also watch the ticker increase every week. Collaboration fuels possibilities that competition can't reach. When we join forces, we create a success that's greater than anything we could achieve alone. So my invitation to you is to ask yourself, where in your life or your business could you be collaborating? It can be who makes dinner at home, who cleans the house. It can be in friendship, what you do for vacation, and it can be in business. What amazing programs or offers or products that you could create if you're willing to collaborate with the people of your life. Lisa believes this, I believe this, but business is personal. We are not meant to put on a suit and a mask and go to work for eight hours a day pretending to be something other than we are. The way that we're gonna show up in joy and health and vibrance in this world is for us to show up exactly how we are and do business as humans, as people, with that authenticity. So this is how you can get involved if you would like to. I have five steps for you. If you haven't done these steps already, please do. Number one, go to the website. You can use the QR code if that's handy. You're gonna pick your membership level. I'll go over the memberships. You register for our next event, join our Facebook group and start collaborating and connecting. This is the home page, and the first place that you're going to visit is the membership site. And you just do that by, let's see if my little pointer works, it doesn't, clicking on the membership icon. So we have a free membership, and this allows you to come to our events. It also makes sure that you get notified early about events because our events sell out. Our mixer sold out in five hours, between the hours of 5 a.m. and 10 a.m. So it's, I'm serious about it. I'm looking for a bigger venue. We are, we are expanding, but you do want at least the community membership. The elevated membership 
is $25 a month and it puts you in our online directory, which I'll show you a picture of that directory soon. So we are building a directory so you can go if you're looking for a bookkeeper or a photographer, you can go and find someone who's a part of our network. And then the empowered membership gives you all of that access to our member directory, coming to the events, and then we have a private Facebook group where you can network with a select group of people who are investing every month and really leaning in. We have a monthly webinar and we have a vault. And the vault houses all our webinars and all our trainings. You get access to both of those. Then you get first opportunity for speaking engagements. We always have a speaker at our mixer and first opportunity for vendor opportunities, which we have a summit coming up. So you're gonna to want to go and pick your membership. This is what it looks like when you go to register for an event. Oh, Nikki's there. So you do the events tab and it'll show you any event we have. Now you do have to be a member to register for an event. So make sure you sign up for the membership and you sign in, you log in before you register for the event. Then you see that little tiny Facebook icon over there. <laughs> that will link you to the Facebook group. And this is what it looks like. So it's called the Rogue Valley Women in Business ENS chapter. Because like I said at the beginning, this is the first chapter and I hope for there to be many all over the world. We are growing. We used to have a Facebook group that was 2000 members and we had to leave it. So we're now rebuilding that group. So if you know someone that was in the old group and they wanna be with us, make sure you tell them we have a new group. This is what our member directory looks like. So you can go and find people that you wanna connect with. This is Starfire. I was talking about her earlier about doing your color analysis um, and she is super fun. And that is the end of my presentation.